Yo, what's up with y'all? Phil James. So, I gotta make this video because I did a live stream last night and it was the most successful live stream that I have ever recorded. So, thank you to all the subs that came and joined me in that live stream last night. As soon as I ended it, it tells you how many people stuck around. It tells you the average watch time of all those people. And then it also tells you the total amount of hours watched. Well, the live stream was an hour and a half, and we had a total watch time of about 11 hours. So that means at least 11 people stuck around roughly the whole time. Pretty awesome. So I wanted to thank all of you out there who watched my live stream last night, and thank you to all the new subs. So much appreciated guys well if you did happen to stick around and watch that live stream you may have heard me bring up a a section of that live stream where i was referring to you know when we started the war in afghanistan how we went there you know afghanistan only produced about 70 to 80 percent of the world's heroin and opium and you know and their poppy fields right and then after the war, they suddenly produced like 96% of the world's heroin and opium supplies. That's insane, right? And I always thought it was planned that way because then what kind of a country is going to ask questions if they're, all if they're all drugged up on opiates and heroin? You know what I mean? Keep everybody distracted because I can tell you that when I was a drug addict and I was shooting heroin into my arm... The last thing I was worried about was some conspiracy theory. I was worried about how I was going to put the needle in my arm again later on that day and then tomorrow morning. That was the only thing I cared about, just saying. So, with all that being said, as you can tell, here at the top, Marines raid CIA. I don't know if it's actual CIA, but I will ease that gap right there and why that seems so crazy. Trump bombing Bush CIA opium labs. It's by Glenn Kennedy. Kennedy. So, pretty cool video from dude putting that together. So I'm going to play some. These are the numerous opium labs in Afghanistan. Now, from what everybody understands, we've been done over there in Afghanistan. And look at us. We are dropping hella amounts of bombs, airstrikes, drone strikes. We're doing it all. You see this footage? Just lighten this shit up again. You would think we would just leave some people alone for once, right? Nope, that ain't gonna happen. Yep, once again, as you can see, this is Afghanistan, opium, and heroin production being destroyed. Which, either way, here's what I want to say about that. You know, if this is all real, which I'm pretty sure it is, because I've uh, found uh, stories on it also, like online, and we'll go to that in about a few seconds. The thing that's blowing my mind, now if we're going to sit here and do this, and we're going to drop it on them. What the hell? My news, my news app likes to update me on celebrities and random shit. I don't get it. So anyways, as you can see, we got bombers, F-22s, and all kinds of shit just dropping all kinds of bombs on Afghanistan. And um, like I said, I know it's real. At least like the bombs have been dropped. Because it's all over the place. We're looking at footage, you know. It does, I mean, just because that they're saying it and this footage might match up doesn't mean it's actually what they're doing, you know what I mean? But the point that I'm making is they're clearly, st you know, they're clearly stating that Afghanistan's being just ripped apart opium style, like... <laughs> Well, I'd like to say that after we go to war in Afghanistan and after we just, you know, rape the country with the dick of democracy, 
I would like to say that the majority of the income of Afghanistan comes from where? Well, probably heroin and opiate production. So, the U.S. begins bombing Taliban drug labs as Trump Afghanistan strategy takes hold. And this is probably the same footage. So, we'll go ahead and let it play again. You know, whatever. Just to see the brutal amounts of destruction that we're causing over there again. Like I said, I thought we were done. You know, everybody thought we were done in Afghanistan, but of course not. You know, we've been hitting Afghanistan. We've been, I used to have an app on my phone. It's called Metadata. That's just what the app is called. And it tells you every drone strike that takes place in the world. And it's absolute insanity because there are so many drone strikes that we are responsible for in Syria, Lebanon, Afghanistan, Iraq, you know, um, and there's many, many more. Somalia, we've been dropping drone, predator drones in Somalia forever, you know, and nobody even knows these things. Like, <clears throat> I didn't have the slightest clue how many drone strikes we were behind as Americans, like the American government. I had no idea how many drone strikes the American government was behind until I got that app. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Like, all day long, we are dropping drones, or drone strikes, and predator missiles. It's stupid. So anyways. The U.S. and Afghanistan launched a series of strikes on November 19th, targeting alleged narcotics laboratories, a key source of revenue for the Taliban. Well, let's go back to the good old, the good old Afghanistani war, and let's talk about that. Who was behind the Taliban? Who funded both sides? Who was basically the Taliban? That's right, the CIA. You know, who funds ISIS? Who is ISIS? Who trained ISIS? Who trained Taliban, you know? Oh, that's right, the CIA and the American government, the secret ops, those guys, you know, the guys that we don't know exist. They're the ones behind Taliban and ISIS. Always have been, always will be, because they need a boogeyman to put every bad event in the world on. And then once they have that boogeyman and they can put the event, the supposed event, on those boogeymen, we can go over and start dropping our bombs. We can go over and start causing havoc on a bunch of innocent people because they have no part in it. Just like we are not dropping those bombs, but Afghanistan, you know, Afghanistanis view Americans, all Americans, as horrible. And it's because they think we're behind or backing our government, which for the most part the masses do because they don't think our government lies to us. So it's one vicious cycle, one snake eating itself. You see what I mean? Okay, U.S. and Afghan forces have launched a series of attacks on narcotics laboratories in southern Afghanistan, marking the start of what could become a long, expanded air war there under President Trump. So, how many wars are we going to take part in? Hmm, absolutely insane. So, the initial strikes which began uh, Sunday and were ongoing Monday represent the first significant use of new legal authorities granted by the Trump administration in August that enabled the Pentagon to target Taliban revenue streams, said Army General John W. Nicholson, Jr., the top U.S. commander in Afghanistan, Previously, the U.S. military conducted strikes only when facing imminent threat or working directly with Afghans. Speaking to the Pentagon press corps via satellite from his headquarters in Kabul, Nicholson said Monday that Afghan A-29 warplanes launched the operation. They were followed by B-52 bombers, advanced F-22 fighters, unarmed aircraft, and Marine Corps rocket fire. There are many, many tar targets that have been identified, Nicholson said. We are striking some, and we will continue to strike these targets as we further refine them. Trump added troops in Afghanistan, but NATO is still short of meeting its goal. Wow, that sounds good. 
asked why the strikes were not carried out until now. Nearly three months after Trump approved his new strategy, Nicholson said the operation required extensive preparation and observation by surveillance aircraft. The Drug Enforcement Administration estimates that there are 400 to 500 opium laboratories across Afghanistan, he said, and about 10 of them have been bombed so far. We have a long, long military bombing raid about to take place. 10 out of 500, that's, you know, a pretty small amount there. And it's just absolute insanity to me because we know that Hollywood likes to drip feed truth into all of their movies, correct? So let's think about this. What's the new, what's that new movie that just came out? Oh, that's right, American Made. And what's the whole purpose of that movie? Tom Cruise being a pilot flying drugs back and forth from other countries into America. Because we all know who controls the drug flow in the world. The CIA. Just like they fund, arm, and train the terrorist organizations. You see what I'm saying here? This is one big scandal, mockery, joke for the powers that be. They fund, they arm, they train the terrorist groups like Taliban or like ISIS. And then we go into a country that produces 70% of the world's heroin and opium production, you know. Once we go in there, we bomb the shit out of them. We tell them what we want. We get what we want. They now produce 96% of the world's heroin and opium. And so then, suddenly, the CIA is flying that opium back and forth, you know, leaving Afghanistan with it, bringing it where? Here to America. And guess where it goes here? To the big pharma industry. And then when the pharmaceutical industry gets it, they start pumping out painkillers, opioids. And guess what happens in this country? The country falls victim to the worst drug abuse issues that it, it has ever seen. And it's not like, you know, people get getting acid and just tripping balls or people smoking weed and being relaxed. No, no, no. Because opiates, opioids, and heroin is a devil in disguise. It feels so good, right? They help so much. But they also tear apart your digestive system, one. They get you complete and totally hooked on them to the point of when you try to stop you are literally withdrawing so hard you would rather die and then you need to figure out a way to get it regardless so you start robbing people look at all the people in jail right now in prison right now for drug abuse okay strictly because of opiates or heroin just look at the numbers it's insanity like i always say I'm a victim of one, of that very same game right there. Heroin, opioids, painkillers, all of it. Now, these strikes required the mapping of their revenue streams and mapping of their infrastructure in areas where we had not done this before, Nicholson said. Hundreds of intelligence analysts have been involved, along with hundreds of hours of aerial surveillance, he added. He indicated that... The tempo of airstrikes in coming days will be roughly the same. Mm. The strikes have been concentrated in northern Helmand, Helmand Provenance, an area where the Taliban have long held sway. More than 20,000 Marines were based there during the Obama administration rooting out the Taliban while training Afghan forces to fight the militants. See, training Afghan forces to fight the, mili the militants, okay? They're not the only ones we trained. We also bought Afghanistan forces. J this is just a little bit ago. We bought a bunch of Afghanistan forces new army fatigues. This literally happened right after I started my YouTube channel. I found a story on it, I, and then I forgot to make a video, but... We bought them so many military fatigues, and we bought them forest camo military fatigues. Forest? It's Afghanistan. They're in a damn desert. Congratulations, America. You suck. 
All right. So the Taliban swiftly reclaimed large swaths of territory after the Marines withdrew in 2014. The strike Sunday hit seven Taliban drug laboratories and and a headquarters in three districts across northern Helmand. Um, all right, three three occurred in the Kajaki district, four in Musa Kuala, and one in San Sangin. All areas controlled by the U.S. military military at the height of Obama's troop surge there. <clears throat> the largest carried out by a B-52 struck an opium processing facility where 50 barrels of drugs were cooking at the time, Nicholson said. Video released by the Pentagon shows the building being consumed by a massive fireball. Well, no shit. You're dropping shit tons of bombs all over it. All right. As always, there will be a link for this if you'd like it. Um, the U.S. government has pursued various anti-drug strategies during its 16-year war in Afghanistan. 16-year <laughs> war in Afghanistan. Yeah, you heard that correctly. But it has done little to hamper the steady resurgence of opium poppy cultivation and drug trafficking since the Taliban's fall in 2001. While in power before the U.S. invasion, the Taliban banned poppy growing as un-Islamic and staged, staged bonfires of confiscated opium and heroin. Now, I had a buddy over there in Afghanistan during that war, and guess what? They weren't guarding oil fields the way we claimed, the way the news claimed and portrayed. No, no, they were guarding opium fields, heroin poppy fields. They were standing guard around it. My buddy was a Marine, and that's where he was, by the way. Because Big Pharma wants that, and then you can keep an entire country drugged up, not asking questions, and not giving a shit about what the government's doing, because they're all clouded mentally due to the opiates and the heroin, okay? That's part of the plan, and like I said, it doesn't do anything good for you. So if you do it, you mess around with it, you dabble in it. Get out of it now before your problem gets too bad. Because mine got bad, and mine got brutal, and I turned into a savage, devilish monster when I was using drugs, and there's not much I haven't done now. Just saying. Until now, though, those U.S. efforts have only occasionally involved the military. During the early post-Taliban years, the Pentagon focused exclusively on pursuing al-Qaeda and Taliban insurgents and expre expressly avoided diverting efforts towards curbing the drug trade. In some cases, this war because of U.S. alliances with warlords or regional strongmen who were involved in drugs. Yeah, you heard that. Okay, I don't think I'm going to read all this because it's pretty big and this video is already getting kind of long. Um, crop substitution. Instead of growing opium and poppies, farmers were given seeds and stuff to grow. Almonds, apricots, green vegetables, and saffron instead of poppy. Another paid farmers cash to destroy their poppy fields and funded interdiction campaigns and much Afghan security forces burned fields under cultivation. See, we got to remember here, though. It's going to sit here and make it seem like the Taliban are to blame, Al-Qaeda are to blame, and, you know, ISIS and all these boogeymen. But really, in all reality, like I said, our Marines were standing guard around those fields back in the day. Our CIA is the ones trafficking those drugs, well, smuggling those drugs into our country. You know, it gets spread out here, but our CIA brings that in, okay? It's not some random military dude bringing that in. It's CIA. Who do you think is flying to Afghanistan right now and smuggling kilos upon kilos of heroin and opium into the country? There ain't not many people doing that. You know, they got to have their own stuff. They got to be doing it on their own, like their own boats, their own yachts, you know, their own planes. And I'm telling you, 
It's people with connections to the CIA that are doing that, okay? It's not any random military guy. But apparently, we have all kinds of new power here in America. Our, administ our President Trump administration does. Because he can go in and play Team America, world police, for drug cultivation in a country he's not president of, you know? He can go in with NATO and all kinds of other forces and start dropping airstrikes and drone strikes on any country he wants. And he can just call it drug related or whatever. The war on drugs is the biggest joke of an operation that has ever existed. There are more people behind bars right now due to drugs and it's cheaper to rehabilitate somebody than it is to lock them up. That's why I got what I got. That was my plea bargain when I was arrested and indicted with my felony charges. I got a bargain. I got out of it. I'm still on probation. I'm still a felon right now. But the moment I pay it, because I've done what I'm supposed to do and because I've remained clean, I get my stuff dismissed. And it's because the city I'm from, or the city I reside in at least, at least realize that it's actually cheaper to help somebody and rehabilitate somebody than it would be to lock me up in prison for the next two to five. See what I'm saying? Now, this video ended up being a lot longer than I thought. It always happens, whatever. Like I said, I will have links for you guys. Just remember though, that this right here is not what they claim. It never is, ever. ever never is when they say oh you know we're bombing Taliban forces we're bombing we're bombing Al Qaeda and Taliban forces that 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 cultivate heroin and opium you know that that is not the case you know that that's our CIA CIA that does that and then all kinds of bullshit comes after so it's just remember, the CIA literally funded the majority of these things. The FBI is probably just as involved. And, you know, we got to keep our heads in the right spot here. They're boogeymen. That's all they are. Al-Qaeda, Taliban, ISIS. They are created groups, trained, armed, and funded by our government and then used as the scapegoats, the boogeymen of society, American society. But all right, y'all, I'm about to get my ass to work. Um, I just wanted to make this because I thought it was pretty gnarly and pretty insane. So, peace.